Hey, what's up guys? MacGyver Dad here. Hey, about a year and a half ago, I became really intrigued with drift trikes. And if you haven't seen drift trikes, just look around on YouTube and Google a little bit and you'll find out what I'm talking about. But I started seeing these things and these things looked so fun. They looked so entertaining. If you were a kid like me who grew up in the late 70s, early 80s and whatnot, you loved your big wheel. You loved your big wheel. Those things had slick tires in the back, had a little brake where you could power slide and everything. And as an adult, I kept saying to myself, we're the big wheels for the adults like me who wanted to, you know, relive their childhood. So, man, people started building drift trikes and uh, some really nice ones came out. You can buy some that are just for downhill, have pedals on it and whatnot. And then a really cool company came along called Local Motors. That's a company that builds things like the Rally Fighter. Not. Anyway, they built a drift trike. It's about a thousand watts. It was front wheel drive with a hub motor and the back had slicks on it, just like you see on all the rest of the drift trikes. But the problem was it was kind of pricey. Now, if you had the money, man, I'd, I'd buy it in a heartbeat because it is well designed and it has a lot of power and it's fast and it's fun. But I thought to myself, you know, realistically, they're just kind of like modified bikes. And if you could do a little welding, a little fabrication, then it really shouldn't be that hard to build one. So I started doing a little research and I found a few guys on YouTube that were building their own for relatively cheap using old bike frames and whatnot. And I thought, hey, I can do this. So that's exactly what I did. Now, so I found a really cheap mountain bike frame on Craigslist and started fabricating. Now I did use a female mountain bike frame because that top crossbar has a slight downward angle. And I needed that because that bar comes back around and ties back into the tube, giving me a little extra rigidity. And you can see as the fabrication goes along, it's starting to take shape and look like a trike. Now, kids were loving it. And obviously this thing was built for my size and not little kids. And then here is the finished product. Got the front wheel, got the slicks on the back. This thing was a blast. All the dads wanted one after they went for a ride and the whole neighborhood just got a total kick out of it. So it was a really cool project. Now, where I'm at right now is I built the drift trike about a year ago and I've been having a blast with it. The kids love it. And the problem was is I didn't reinforce the frame quite enough because my weight plus the kids and a slide around on the street, I started to get a little bit of a bent frame. So it's good. Basically it's in the process of being repaired right now. But so I wanted to kind of introduce you to some of the key elements that make a really cool drift trike and some of the things that I did on a budget and it was really easy to do. And I'm going to show you. So let's go through. All right. So let's start with the power. Now, so with the drift trike, there's basically, there's three options. Number one, you could just do downhill, which is what a lot of these guys do. They get to a tall hill and they go sliding down with their buddies. That's great, but you know, that takes a lot of planning. You got to have people shuttle you around. So that takes us to our next option, which is getting it power, right? Well, everybody knows there's two options these days. You've got electric power and you've got gas powered. Now I like gas powered stuff. I like the noise and everything else, but honestly, for me, right around the neighborhood, I didn't want to be a jerk. And so I went for the electric option because it's a little bit more stealthy. It's cleaner and there's no fuss. There's no muss. I got all the batteries. I got, I know how to plug it all up. So that's what I did. And I found a front hub motor electric conversion kit for bicycles. So this is really cool because now I'm front wheel drive, just like the local motors drift trike and the back is free to slide around. Now, a lot of guys do it to where there's a gas powered ones and you've probably seen them and they power the back end. Problem is you don't get a whole lot of grip. So the nice thing is, is when I'm powering through a corner, I just jam on the throttle and it still accelerates. So there's just two options, two different methods to do it. But basically this is a hub motor. It's a stock part and you just get it and it's not that much of a big deal. The only other thing that you got to figure out is what you're going to power it with. And uh, I I'm accustomed to using lithium polymer batteries. Some people do lead acid, they're heavier, they're kind of more of a, you know, cheaper option, but they're heavier. And uh, some people will do uh, more like the lithium ion or like the, the cells that they're using in like power drills and stuff like that. So those are some options. Along with the hub motor, you've got your standard speed control that comes with like an electric assist bike kit. And I think this whole thing cost me like 260 bucks, 270 bucks, which really isn't too bad. And this is considered an 800 watt. All right, so we talked about the front motor options. Now, what do we do about the back end? So the back end, a lot of guys do a couple options. They either buy go-kart tires, almost similar to like what I have on the, uh, the go-kart there, okay? But those can be a little bit pricey too. So other guys in some of these forums are talking about using just cheap old dolly wheels, and you can pick those up at Harbor Freight for literally like eight or nine bucks, and they're cheap. The only problem though is that they have terrible bearings. They're not designed for like sliding around the street and going high speeds and stuff. And they do warn you about that. 
So some people came up with some good ideas and that's what I did borrow. So like I said, the original setup bearing is not even a bearing, it's a bushing. And after a very short period, these things start to get wobbly and they start to break down and sometimes they just disintegrate. So basically what I did is the original ones pop out pretty easy. And I bought these higher quality bearings on Amazon. And I think the whole kit for all two tires, which is about four bearings, was maybe like 12 bucks. So it's a really good investment and upgraded. And the rest of the rim is honestly, it's been fine for me. Okay, so you got the bearing. Now you've got the wheel here. And essentially what happens is we use a large diameter PVC pipe. It's somewhere around about 10 inches. Don't quote me on that, but it's roughly about that. And what you do is you insert the tire deflated and then you, when you get it centered up, you inflate the tire and it captures it. It's a little bit like that drum sander on your Dremel. When you create, the more you crank it, the more the rubber expands and the more it grips onto it. That's exactly what's happening here. Okay, so we've got the two PVCs. Now, the only problem with these Harbor Freight tires was, even with these things expanded out, they still weren't quite gripping 100%. So I started experimenting with putting another ring of PVC on the inside. And actually, that has worked out fantastic, and I have not had any PVC slicks slide off since I've done that. So that's been a really good mod. Now, the other thing you got to think about is what you're going to sit on. Now, some people just use good old go-kart seats and whatnot, but the best drift tracks that I saw and I really liked used a tractor seat. Now what's really cool is you can go onto eBay and you can find these things for pretty cheap. I mean, we're talking like 20, 25 bucks. You buy a couple and you save a little bit of money. And you might think to yourself, well, there's no backrest. There's no, you know, real support. There's no seatbelt. But, you know, if you think about it, tractors have been around for a really long time and you would think they would know what is a good, comfortable seat. These guys got to sit them on for a long time. And surprisingly, these tractor seats have really, really good ergonomics. Your butt doesn't want to slide off them. They, they've got these little side areas and uh, they're actually really, really comfortable, even though you don't have a backrest. But honestly, I haven't really found that I've needed one. So overall, this tractor seats worked out really, really good. And I like it. It looks cool. I painted it up a little bit. It was cheap. Some of the go-kart seats are really expensive. They don't look like anything special. Nothing looks cooler than a tractor seat. All right. And last but not least, you got to find some place to put your batteries. And I kind of looked at a lot of different options. I tried zip tying into the frame and all sorts of things. And once again, I went over to Harbor Freight and they have these cool little tool cases, if you will. And they're not really heavy duty or anything, but they don't have to be. But that's nice. They've got these little locks on here. Once again, these things are like 12 bucks or something like that. 10, 12 bucks. And they work really great. So listen, let's not waste any more time talking about this. And let's show you some video and you'll get an idea of how fun these things really are.
hopefully within about a week now, I'll have my frame all back together, reinforced where it needs to be, and I'll be able to get out and enjoy it with the kids. We have such a blast on this thing, and a lot of people are always asking, like, why'd you build this thing? And then I let them ride it, and they go, I want one. Can you build me one? I'm like, ah, go online and figure it out yourself, because, hey, if you're a MacGyver dad, you're going to get it done, right? So, hey, thanks for tuning in. Come back soon. We're going to be doing some more stuff and putting it on for you guys to check out. And uh, feel free to comment, ask some questions below, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to be able to see all the good stuff me and my crew will be up to. Right, Ryder? Right, buddy? Right, buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryder agrees. Subscribe.